Honda, you will uh, have a presentation about 45 or 50 minutes. And then after that is a Q&A. So I will, I will uh, if it's ready, of course, for Bobby, the other will, will, will join uh, in the in the meeting. Okay, so shall I start? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a bit feedback, yeah. Okay, I think that there's a feedback. Okay, so we, we may start. Uh, I will introduce you. Uh, no, I will, I will inter uh, Gundur, how, how to help this, uh, Gundur? Yes. Uh, is there any? Uh, there is uh, no problem in me. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, the problem. Uh, uh, maybe change the microphone. Myself? Or the speaker. Or the speaker. Yes. Uh, the speaker. Oh, sorry, sorry, to... sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Okay. I think I have a problem with it. Okay. Okay, I will, I will introduce you through the, I think I will share my screen first. Okay. Uh, uh, Good morning, uh, everybody. So uh, today, uh, our uh, our programs is the uh, webinar uh, and uh, today lecture. Uh, just some, just. So, so the 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 I think I have. I think changing the setting for the speaker and microphone, Pachanda. Think that. Uh, oh, changing the speak. Uh, changing. Yes, changing the. Besides the mute button, there are the upward arrow. Choose the speaker towards the headphone or the microphone towards the headset microphone. Yes. Both of them already in headphone or micro or headset. Okay, I, you, you can hear my, my voice? Yes, clearly. Okay, it's already clear, right? Okay, sorry, sorry for, for a very, uh, just I will, I will like uh, to introduce uh, uh, for today webinar. So our program is uh, the webinar by uh, Dr. Honda. Okay, so that uh, Dr. Honda is from the uh, Karnasawa uh, University. He is a lecturer now in the uh, Karnasawa University. He's an associate professor. And then 
uh, he graduated from the University of uh, Tokyo. So that uh, our program for today, uh, after the webinar, uh, there will be a, a call for, for proposal for the Kurita Overseas Grant. But let's we start uh, with the uh, webinar uh, given by the Dr. Honda. Dr. Honda, your time uh, use, please. Yeah, thank you very much for your kind introduction, Mr. Chandra. So I'll start my lecture. Can I see my slide? Okay. So thank you very much uh, for giving me this kind of good opportunity to talk about antimicrobial resistance. So I think you, some of you may already know about the antimicrobial resistance. So I want to talk about, I have been the, done the field survey in Japan, also some Asian countries like Thailand, India, Sri Lanka, uh, about the antimicrobial resistance in water environment and wastewater. So I want to talk about my experience and uh, including some literature review and I want to give you some perspectives. So now COVID-19 is really a good, the big issue in, in the world. But AMR is also, it's a long time, long term, Problem in the future. So, just so this is the very famous on your report, uh, which which is says that the antimicrobial resistance becoming will predict to become the major uh, cause of the death. Uh, uh, up to the 10 million cases, and uh, it will be more than the cancer in 2050. Mm. And the estimate death, and yearly, estimate the yearly annual death due to antimicrobial resistance is is around one, less than 1 million in 2013, but they feel predicted to reach 10 million in 2050. And the report uh, estimates that the major, uh, major impacted the area is the Africa and Asian countries. Mm. So NGI predicted to have the almost 5 million deaths because of the antimicrobial resistance. So, and one of the important, another important issue in the MR is the MR is not a problem in the one country, it's, but also the kind of world issues. So this is a case of the uh, one of the superbug called NDM1, which has the resistance to the most beta lactam antibiotics. And it was, this was found uh, in a Swedish patient who traveled to India. And, but after a couple of years, then the, this NDM1 was found in the, at every continent. So, yeah, currently this uh, people doesn't have the international travel because of COVID situation. But when we reopen the gates for international travel, so AMR is spread all, all over the world uh, because of the people travel and also possibly by the food trade. Mm. So 
Asia and Africa are now concerned the potential site of new AMR emergence. So once the new AMR emergent emerged, then it spread to the all of the countries, probably in the uh, two or three years. So concerning this situation, the WHO, UNAP, and the many related international organizations the, uh, proposes uh, advocate to tackle with the MR issue in the world. And now, now it is said, it is important that one health approach for AMR mitigation. The One Health is the approach to of the collaborative efforts of multiple disciplines of environment, animal, and human mm, health. Mm. So because this is our health approach is not only for MR, but uh, every kind of disease, infectious diseases. Uh, as you know, COVID nineteen is the originator from the uh, bat coronavirus or the pangolin coronavirus, and uh, infected the human and spread into um, the human society. And the MR is also uh, spread among these uh, disciplines domains. It's it spreads human to human, but also the animal to human, and human human discharge the MR into the environment. And that's the environment discharge, MR discharge the environment, possibly transmitted to the animal or the humans again. So we need the comprehensive approach yeah, to control MR, not only the human, not only the animals, not only the environment, but to include all of them. And we are environmental engineers, so, uh, we can, we now, we work for MR issues in water environment. And in water environment, wastewater is a major source of MR. When we have the drugs, antibiotics, or the, the animals, the livestock animals, like cows, or pig, also chickens, also had fed with the antibiotics. So then the antibiotic resistant bacteria is enriched in our body or the, these livestock bodies. And they are discharged in the human waste, like feces, then as wastewater, and some may be treated, uh, but the wastewater treatment plant doesn't, have the reduction of AMR, but not complete reduction. I will talk about this later. And some of them could be discharged in the water environment or in some area which doesn't have the wastewater treatment. The wastewater containing antibiotic resistant bacteria is discharged to a water environment directly. So then when the drinking water source or the, the water is used for bathing or swimming or fishing, this antibiotic resistance are possibly you know, transmitted to humans or the animals again, and possibly cause disease. So when you are infected, the antibiotic resistance uh, infectious disease, you, you cannot cure treated by the antibiotic drugs. So you may suffer from the longer uh, duration of disease sickness, or maybe uh, you will get more severe uh, sickness. So I wanna uh, talk about our experience on the antibiotic bacteria in Asian water environment. So it is already, uh, I think almost 10 years ago, maybe yes, six or seven years ago. Uh, we did the uh, river catchment base, catchment scale uh, field survey uh, in Thailand about antibiotic resistant bacteria in river water. 
So we target the Chapa River and also uh, the four major tributaries, Ping, Yom, Nang, Wang rivers. And we took a sample, uh, maybe about 30, 30 or 40 sites. And we isolated the E. coli from the river water and we tested the resistance to the six antibiotics um, of each E. coli isolates uh, from the river. And what we found is the resistance bacteria is present not only in the urban area, but also rural area. But the near the urban area, like in Chiang Mai or here's Bangkok, this is Chapra River. Mm. So there are high abundance of multiple resistance, uh, which includes the clinical important antibiotics like quinolones. Uh, so mainly Chapra River basin. So urban drainage is is impact uh, to increase the AMR to the clinical important antibiotics. But also in the rural areas, the classic antibiotics like tetracycline or sulfur drug is also abundant. Mm -hmm. So antibiotic is spread all over the basin and the higher abundance near the uh, urban area. And this is a case in the Sri Lanka. We did in the maybe two or three years ago. And we took a sample from the Kelani River, which is the river flowing from the center of the uh, uh, Ceylon Island to the capital of Sri Lanka, Colombo City. Uh, and this river is used for drinking water source of uh, Colombo City. Mm. And we took, took the sample from the four sites uh, named K1 to K4 and uh, isolate the E. coli and uh, uh, abundance of five antibiotics was analyzed by this diffusion methods. So from K1 to K4, it's K1 in the up, most upstream. So for levels vaccines, the ciprofloxacin, they are, they are quinolones, which is clinically important antibiotics. Uh, and they have, have the high abundance. They should have abundance since the upstream area because the upstream area also have the, the populated area. Uh, the, the, along the Kelly River, there's, there are uh, populated area. So probably the, in the upstream is the much affected um, by the upstream wastewater or upstream urban drainage. And the classic antibiotics, it is really highly abundant in any place in the river. So uh, these recent, these drugs, canamycin, tetracycline, sulfur drug, they are already abundant, it's all over the river. And this is the case in the uh, India, uh, in the Guwahati, in the Assam area. It's northeast of India, and we took the samples from the the Gandhi Nagar River. This is a really big river, B1 to B4, and also the urban drainage in Guwahati. Guwahati city doesn't have the wastewater treatment plants, so wastewater is is discharged into the urban channels. Uh, and we analyzed the antibiotic resistance genes from these samples. So B1, B2 is the upstream of the Guwahati city and the B3, B4 is the downstream of the Guwahati city. So in the downstream of the Guwahati city, we found that AAC this is the aminoglycoside, uh, resistance to aminoglycoside. 
and also the uh, blood time, this is beta lactam and the ampicillin resistance genes. And these are also found in the urban drainage. Uh, so for these antibiotic genes, the urban drainage from the Guaz city is probably the source of the source in the downstream river sites. Yeah. So antibiotic genes to clinical born drugs were often injected in the urban drainage in Guaz city. Yeah. So, so there's one important question when we study about uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria in wastewater treatment plant. The wastewater treatment plants reduce, treat the wastewater, but also the plant keep the sludge in the sludge is the, the complex uh, matrix of the, the microorganisms. So the important question is, does the wastewater in the plant works as a reservoir or barrier of the RB? Mm. So it is known the sludge also contains some antibiotic resistant bacteria. So my question is both, wastewater in the works as both reservoir and uh, barrier. And I want to introduce the fate of antibiotics and bacteria in wastewater treatment. So let's think about the fate behavior of the resistance bacteria in the wastewater treatment plants. But this is this is this is not about the antibiotics and bacteria, but about the total bacteria population in wastewater treatment plant. Wastewater treatment process in nature. Uh, have can reduce the population bacteria. So this is data is taken from the, the literatures, and this is the log removal value of the total heterotrophs and total coliform and E. coli. So it depends highly depends on the wastewater the plant, but as uh, uh, as average, total heterotrophs is to reduce like about 1.5 log, and total coliform is though about 2 log, and the equal is 2.2 2 or 3 logs. So, wastewater treated plant can reduce the total bacteria population. And in case of E. coli, and this is fecal indicator bacteria, it reduces a 2 log. That means the equal population become 1% uh, in the treated effluent uh, than who influent wastewater. So when we discuss about the uh, removal performance, reduction performance of ARB, it's the important question is the are the ARB released more than the total bacteria or the less than total bacteria? And the conclusion is the reduction of the antibiotics and bacteria is e almost equal to the total bacteria reductions. So that means that there's no specifically larger or smaller removal of ARB compared to the other bacteria, uh, non-resistant bacteria. So this, this chart is created from the uh, study of the Nova and Manaya. And this x-axis is the population of the bacteria in the effluent. And y-axis the population in the effluent. And I plot that. So this black one is the total bacteria population. So it includes resistant bacteria and also non-resistant bacteria. So this black one, so if we put the black ones, for example, in one data, the influence is about six log and the influence is like about five log. So when we draw the line, we, this, the dotted line, it shows the log number value at 1.3. So 
total bacteria is, you know, the total bacteria is about 1.3. And this colored plot is the resistant bacteria. Blue is uh, amoxicillin, resistant bacteria, and the uh, orange one is the tetracycline, the red one is the ciprofloxacin, one of the quinolone resistance bacteria. So, of course, this the population is but less than the total bacteria in most cases, and uh, they have a variety of the fluctuated population in the effluent. But reduction is almost on the same line, showing the LRB 1.3. So that means the total bacteria and the resistant bacteria have the similar removal value. Mm -hmm. So Rogan value ARB is equal to ARB total bacteria. So there's no specific removal of ARB in the wastewater treating plant. Mm. And this is this is uh, the change of abundance of resistance E. coli from effluent to uh, influent to effluent at each step of the wastewater in the process. So this is the population of the E. coli. So population of E. coli is the, it's about the, about the five block and it doesn't change much until the aeration tank, but the reduced after the secondary treatment because it's second treatment, they remove the bacteria by sedimentation. So it can reduce in like maybe 2.5 log. And abundance of resistance E. coli is, the influent is about 40%. And effluent also 40%. So it was similar. So this is support the previous results. The removal of the ARB is, doesn't change from the, it's not different from the RV of total bacteria. So that means the ratio, ratio proportion of the AMR in the bacteria is, is same. So, and, but in the slash, it slightly increases. So something happens in the, in the slash. Mm. But, this is the this is taken in Japan based on this diffusion methods. We take the sample and uh, cultivate the E. coli and isolate the E. coli and uh, put the antibiotic drug tablet on the media and check the resistance to each antibiotics. But when we did it in the metagenomic uh, survey, it'll be quite different. It showed quite different results. So this is the abundance of total uh, resistance genes is for a 16 s based population. So this data takes, but we took the samples and we extract DNA and read the uh, metagenomic sequence, read the sequence of the DNA and to get the number of reads of resistance genes. And we also uh, get the uh, bacterial population as the number of reads of a 16S liposomal RNA gene. So it's kind of a, the abundance, a gene-based abundance of antibiotic resistance. So we did this survey at the five plants. We took three times in summer, three times in winter, and we made a composite samples. Then we found the uh, interesting results. And this is influent slash and treated the effluent. So in effluent, its total ARG per 16S bacteria population is about 40%. But it decreased at the slash tank and the shell tank is almost same. So now you have one plant 
every plant has the influent wastewater has the highest the gene based abundance of resistance and it decreased a lot in the slush tank and the, in the fluent it's a slight increase or almost same so abundance of anti-resistant genes decreased in slush so it's really inconsistent with the results when we get from the culture-based uh, abundance of antibiotic resistance. And so I suspected whether it is will be true or not. So, but in the, we, we surveyed the other literatures, but the literatures also reported the similar results. This is the metagenic analysis in gene-based abundance of uh, antibiotic resistance. The influence is the highest in the sludge, the influence has a low abundance. And this is the real-time PCR-based study of the target antibiotic genes to the 16 s ribosomal gene copies. So influence, this is a sludge, this is influence. But this plant has the similar or a bit increase, but this and this plant, the influent is the highest, the gene-based abundance and the decrease in sludge and effluent, this plant also. So, but it is likely true in the many plants that the gene-based abundance, abundance resistance is highest in effluent and decrease the sludge and effluent. So if we cultivate the, the E. coli or the coliform and the study the abundance of MR and the culture-based, then influent and effluent have similar abundance. But if we study in the gene-based abundance MR using the metagenomic analysis or the QPCR of the target ARGs. This is decrease uh, in the after slush aeration tank and the effluent. So this looks really inconsistent. But I think the key is the culture based analysis target the fecal bacteria like E. coli or coliform or Enterococcus, Enterobacter. But gene based abundance target the whole bacterial community, not only the E. coli, not only the fecal bacteria, but also the every bacteria which presents in the slush. Uh, so my hypothesis in the, to explain this phenomenon, these results is the difference in the fecal bacteria and non-fecal bacteria. In the wastewater is mostly consists of fecal bacteria and resistance maybe about 40% of antiviral bacteria. But in, in slush, yeah, this free abundance of antibiotic resistance in fecal bacteria possibly increased by horizontal gene transfer or the resistance induction by the uh, stresses like oxidative stress or uh, whatever in the slush. But slush contains a lot of non-fecal bacteria because it's aerobic conditions, temperatures like, uh, like 20, 15 to 30 degrees Celsius. Fecal bacteria grow well in the anaerobic conditions and temperature at like 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. So slush bacteria communities is quite different from the wastewater community. So it contains many of non-fecal bacteria. And my speculation is probably the non-fecal bacteria has a the small abundance of resistance. So when we see the total abundance resistance, it looks decrease. And the effluent, well, maybe it's, it's speculated to have the similar ratio of the bacteria discharged. Uh, so they have this 
also has a smaller abundance of resins. And but this is uh, uh, so, so this is supporting data and also have some difference from the hypothesis. So this, we took the five plants, we compared the, the antibody resistance gene profile of each uh, samples uh, and compare with the principal component analysis. And this blue plot is the wastewaters of the five plants. And the orange plot is the sludge uh, samples. So wastewater sludge has a really different uh, antibody resistance gene profile. Yeah. So this supports the, the hypothesis that's because of different micro community or different ARG profile, it's uh, quite different. Uh, but what is interesting is that this is effluent. So wastewater, in the aeration tank, the sludge concentration MS SS is about typical MS concentration is 1500 to 2000. And the SS concentration in the wastewater after primary sedimentation, it's it's about like 100 or, or sometimes less. So that means the sludge bacteria and only one per, only less than ten percent of wastewater bacteria is flows into sludge bacteria. So if this sludge bacteria is equally, I mean sludge bacteria and the uh, fecal bacteria and wastewater equally discharged after primary sedimentation tank, maybe effluent microbial committing effluent ARG profile effluent is quite similar with the sludge because in the sludge most of them is is not the fecal bacteria. But interestingly, the effluent has the profile like um, between the wastewater and sludge. So it's not it's not like sludge. It's not like a wastewater, just like between them. So that is another the weird and the interesting point. So in the final sedimentation process. This means final fermentation process, the wastewater bacteria is, has maybe removed less than the sludge bacteria. Sludge bacteria is the, it's kind of enriched bacteria community which can settle well. But wastewater bacteria does not, does not enrich just directly from the, our feces. So maybe some of them is is adhere on the sludge particle and the settle, but some of them does not the merge with the sludge, the flux or sludge bacteria community, but just a float swim in the liquid phase and maybe these bacteria cannot be reduced by the sedimentation, final sedimentation. So mm, probably my hypothesis is that some of the ARB in the wastewater bypass the wastewater treatment and it carried over to effluent. So yeah, we are trying to study about this, but anyhow, so this is current hypothesis. So, so what total, Total reduction of wastewater treatment has the, the reduction of the bacteria population and the ARB also at the ARB, but the sum of the ARB cannot be reduced in bypass effluent. So that will affect the antibody resistance profile in the effluent, uh, which is different from the wastewater treatment of sludge. And another important source is not the effluent but untreated wastewater, especially discharged from the stone water. So yeah, this is the 
photograph of the the big flood in the Thailand uh, in the 2016, sorry, 40. Uh, uh, yeah. So as you may already know, the wastewater is is sometimes dumped without treatment uh, because of sewer overflow, a combined sewer overflow. So even when you have the wastewater treatment plant, so in dry weather, the, all the wastewater collected is sent to the wastewater treatment plant. But it, when you have the heavy rain, the in the combined sewer, which collect the rainwater wastewater in one pipeline, the wastewater is diluted with the storm water, the rainwater, and if rain is really heavy, so we cannot treat all of the quantity in the wastewater treatment plant. So when the quantity exceeds the capacity of the treatment plant, we discharge into the river water or surface water directly without treatment. And in the United States, uh, it's a little bit stole data, but the, in 2004, the US EPA reports that 20% of annual discharge of combustion waste discharge untreated CSO. So in the Asian context, Asia has a monsoon weather. So in the, the rainy seasons, you have a lot of heavy rain. So this the CSA happens, uh, I think, more frequently uh, than the temperate weather conditions. And but so what motivated this fact? I invest. I try to quantify the discharge of antibiotics and bacteria from combined sewer overflow. Uh, uh, in Japan. And in this plant, the, all the combined sewer is go to the pumping station. And pumping stations, they usually pump the, all the wastewater to the, the wastewater treated plants. But if the shoe, sewage quantity exceeds the plant capacity, they pump up to the some of them into the river. And but this bar chart shows the amount of uh, sorry, it's forty five <laughs> minutes. I rushed to finish it. So what in this is data in Canada. Canada have the heavy snow in the winter, so we have a lot of CS in the winter. And my, in this plant, 23% of the combined sewage for discharge is introduced as well. And we calculate the ARB discharge into the river from the treated effluent and uh, also untreated CS4. So this plant covered population 30,000. And annually, it re plant receives, I'm uh, sorry, the sewer combined sewer received uh, about 18 log of the log CFU of E. coli per year. And really a lot of uh, E. coli is discharged onto the CSO. So as amount of wastewater is about 27,000, sorry, sorry, 27 million cubic meter per year. And well, about 75% dish is treated effluent, but total amount of equal is much less. But in untreated CS world, discharge only do one fourth of the uh, annual combined sewer, sewage, but the, it has a really a lot of equal contribution. So AMR in this river, AMR is mainly discharged from, not from treated effluent, but also from the untreated CS world. And I want to introduce some data about the rainy season in the Asian countries. So uh, this is data in the Sri Lanka I showed in the in the beginning of this this talk, and this is the rainy season, and D means a dry season. 
So rainy season helps the higher abundance of this bacteria in the upstream. So that means that in the, this upstream area, the in rainy season, the, it's this uh, quantity of urban drainage increased. I mean, the, it's rainwater flushes the wastewater urban drainage and pollute the water with antibodies and bacteria. And this is in case of uh, and uh, RG detection. So in the antibody resistance gene spaces. So as I see the E. coli abundance MR in the E. coli is increasing in the rainy season, but the concentration of ARG is uh, decreased in the rainy season. So but this is because the in the rainy season is the ARG is, is diluted. So concentration become less. But the proportion resistance has become high. So that means the loading, I mean, the total quantity of MR discharge is increased. But as, as we see as the concentration decreased because of dilution by rainwater. So, sorry, I have. So now doing the, uh, com comparing the antibodies on gene among the countries. So Japan, now I finished the comparing Japan, USA and China. So different country has a different ARG profile. And, but actually the, this data of tropical Asian country is missing. So I'm gonna try to study, but I think young researchers also study about the ARG or AMR in the tropical Asian countries to cover these facts okay so it's already time so this is a take out home message urban wastewater is a major source of MR and uh, snowball has much more there be roles and in the concept of a context of asian countries so MR in the world is much effective but more so it's the rain rain uh, season rainy season and the army water are diluted in the rainy season, but they are loading from wastewater probably higher in the rainy season. And the ML profile in the wastewater differs some countries. The more surveillance in tropical Asian countries are necessary. Yeah, acknowledgement. Thank you very much. Uh, so I quickly rush. Uh, I want to have questions if it's not clear for you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh... Thank you, Dr. Honda. Thank you. Uh, so that uh, we come up with the uh, uh, Q&A uh, session. If you have a question, you may open, if you are in the Zoom link, so you may open your mic. You may uh, directly ask the question to Dr. Honda. Or if there is in the chat box, it may be Guntur may help uh, us uh, what will be the, the question in the chat box. So th that uh, things are probably uh, uh, you are in the, in, in the, in the Zoom. Could, if you have any question, you may uh, raise your question, please. Uh, I think there are already questions from the oh, chat okay. box. Okay, okay. I think so in the chat box, but probably uh, 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 Dr. Honda, you may uh, turn off your share, please. Probably, uh, uh, Guntur okay. will, will, will share the questions. I think so. Okay. Okay, so now uh, see the question, some questions. Yeah, I think oh. so. Guntur will help, right? So probably you, yes. you, you, turn, uh, you have to turn off the, the share first. And then uh, for, I think it might be, uh, okay, you, you, you may, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So that is for, from me. So that it is a, or you have already mentioned about the ARV present, especially in the developing countries. You know that most of the developing countries, they don't have the uh, facilities. So how serious uh, from your opinion? Uh, okay, thank you very much, Sandro. Uh, so I think it could be, I think, more serious in the, some countries, uh, in the developed country also. So because 
I think upstream, as as I show in the Sri Lanka case, sometimes upstream urban drainage is discharging river water, and in some area in the in the developed countries, the river water is used without treatment. Yeah, some may bathing directly in the river water, or the maybe some of you may catch the fish in the river. So the I think in such countries, this is the higher risk than the that we use the river water after treatment uh, in the tap water. So that that is really I think the exactly the one health issues because. Mm -hmm. The AMR in the environment directly caused the pose the risk uh, of the humans, and also when you use the feed the river water to the animals, maybe animals can also possibly uh, get the AMR. Mm. So that is, I think, really important issue in the uh, tropical Asian countries. Uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, it, is there any? It might be. Yeah. This uh, because you 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 also uh, studying about the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Is, is this any relationship or what we have been working mm -hmm. on with the uh, SARS-CoV-2 viruses presence in the water environment? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> the first the Chandra says uh, this suggested me to talk about the SARS-CoV-2 <laughs> in the <laughs> wastewater, but uh, yeah, Kitajima says already talk about this. I choose a different topic. But anyhow. Well, I think the SARS-CoV, when SARS-CoV is, is, is contained in wastewater, it could be also discharged in the, the river water or water environment. So what we know is that probably, probably the SARS-CoV is not very persistent in the wastewater. It's, I think it's vulnerable than the norovirus or the virus, which is classically studied viruses. But so in the treated effluent, probably the SARS-CoV-2 is not become the big problem. Mostly are reduced or the rules the infectivity. But the untreated wastewater, we don't know. Probably mm. it's the risk is much lower than the norovirus and other viruses, but if Depends on the situation. I think it's, it's there are many many patients in the in the in the area, and it's and then possibly has the some amount of infectious SARS-CoV-2. So yeah, but I guess it's it's the risk is smaller than the other pathogens. Wastewater contains not only the SARS-CoV-2 but the other many viruses, other pathogens. So. And, my my speculation is that maybe the risk is is higher in the other viruses uh, mm. or the pathogens in wastewater. Mm. Okay, thank you. I think the uh, the second one, this one is from Tuan. Uh, so that one is uh, about the, the method. Which guideline do you follow when you carry out the dish diffusion method? We call a sample in Japan. The, the, yeah, in so our study we follow the CLSI methodology. Uh, yeah, of course, CSS also does sometimes revise the criteria. So it's, I use the most updated one at the timing of the analysis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from that one is for, uh, from Intan. Uh, so that one is the third one. They also observe, or is there any evidence of gene transfer or antibiotic gene uptake in during or in the wastewater treatment plan? Yeah, this is this is a, yeah, it's really important questions, and I do not study about that, but I know some papers about the possibility probability of gene transfer in the sludge. So it happens actually, uh, it happens, but not very high probability. But it happens when we consider about the amount of. Sorry, I don't remember the the exact value but it happens in the some probability. So, and uh, when we consider the concentration of bacteria in the sludge, it's must slightly increase the, uh, possibly slightly increase the, the population of antibiotic resistant bacteria. Mm. Yes, okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, so that one is 
probably the, uh, Gundur is, a, is another question, I think. Probably you can help to show it. Yes, so, wait a bit. Yes, okay. just come in. Okay, okay probably yeah. uh, to make uh, everybody can uh, see the question, probably Gundur will help us to add it. Additional, but uh, if anybody from in the in the in the room may uh, would like to ask a question directly to Dr. Honda, please you open your mic. Yeah, Dr. Honda. Okay, okay, please. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I'm not a microbiologist, something like that, but I'm uh, really interested with your statement or a hypothetical statement uh, that in the sluts, uh, there's no, not much difference between the, the inlet and outlet, isn't it? So something like that. So what, what do you think in the sluts, uh, uh, the fit of that uh, anti uh, uh, or the, the resistant uh, micro, uh, microbes. What is the fate of uh, that kind of microbes in the anaerobic situation? Because I, I, I'm not more in, interested in anaerobic system. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, there are some studies uh, about the anaerobic digestion. Effect of the in the microbial resistance. So basically in the anaerobic digestion, it's a little bit heated. So it reduces the AMR. I, I don't know which level, but they can reduce some, but, may, but not for the complete removal. So it possibly remains some. When, when that's just with heating uh, system, when there is uh, normal, just normal, no heating uh, treatment and so on, it says the anaerobic situation uh, has impacted or, or no, no effect at all to the, that kind of bacteria? Well, Minor exactly the temperature effect now. So I think they are studying the mesophilic, mesophilic condition is like 37 or so. Maybe yeah. you don't need a heating in the tropical mm -hmm. uh, weather condition. And so, mm, so if antibodies and bacteria come from the fecal bacteria, they probably grow well in the anaerobic and mesophilic conditions, but I didn't I didn't see the paper like that. Uh, probably it's 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 rather reduced uh, in the anaerobic digestion process. Mm. Okay, but okay. I, I don't I don't see the many papers on that. Maybe it's the point yeah. that we need uh, more studies. Uh, yeah, it's a yeah. good point. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so still. Much. Oh, uh, Gunter, so that, okay, that one is from Forza Vietnam. So hospital wastewater might contain more RP than common one, uh, common uh, municipal wastewater. Uh, okay, when municipal waste is not fully treated, so especially in the Asian countries, uh, do you think the strict control of hospital uh, by on-site visual treatment plant uh, it's one of the makes sense to, to control the ARB. Please, uh... Yeah, I think, yeah, sorry. Yeah, this is very important point. So there are several points of discussion, the professor Vietnam's questions. One is the, about the kind of on-site treatment, possibility of on-site treatment. And that is, my, but probably the situation is different among the countries, among cities, but the situation I know in Bangkok is the there's a the canal network is and the canal is works kind of the the open sewage channel, especially when it rained. So in the when it rains, many entry to wastewater is just in the canal. So this is probably in the in the pipelines. There's many of the pollutants is 
It stays as a sediment when it dries and when it rains, it flushes the sediments and to the canal. So in that sense, so it is in, in monsoon area, it's the rainy season, it's the really heavy rain flushes the, the pollutants in the pipeline. So to prevent that is important to have the on-site treatment, good on-site treatment. So uh, yeah, hospital wastewater could be the important source of ARB. So the on-site treatment of hospital wastewater could be, I think, important uh, to reduce the discharge from the source. And another point is the, what is a good treatment technology. So actually I showed the, the difference of ARG profile of the slash effluent wastewater. And we took, a, they are, most of them are from the conventional activist slash process. But we also took the data from the membrane biogra process. And in the membrane biogra process, it, the, its ARG profile is the more closer to the slash. I mean, the, it contains the less wastewater slash. Waste, less wastewater bacteria community. So, in so the member bacteria could be reduced more. I think more reliable reduction of the the AMR because wastewater bacteria is some of the does not merge with the slush and they just float on the liquid phase and the sediment attack just go out or through the sediment tank and go go out in the effluent. But if membrane bioreactant, like every, all the water should pass the membrane. So that that kind of the floating bypass of the bacteria will not happen. So probably it will have the better reduction of the AMR. Mm. Okay, uh, thanks. So. That's one of, uh, is, uh, okay, I think so. Gunter will show some more question. Yeah, from the Parindo song. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a very technical one, probably. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is important and difficult question, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so it is currently it's hard to uh, estimate the risk, I mean, the quantitative estimation of the risk of AMR, uh, so it is hard to decide uh, the risky level, the dangerous level. So actually the, it's AMR is the existing the natural water in the wild, uh, I mean the wild animal also have the antiparasitic bacteria, it's natural sources. So I think what we have to consider is that there are many kinds of antibiotics and uh, what and about we, I think what impact most is the resistance to the clinically important uh, drugs. Uh, clinically important drugs is the the drugs which is used when when patients are really in a critical conditions and when we don't have the other drug options. So this is definitely. Uh, Recent to clinical important drugs should be reduced uh, differently as much as possible uh, to prevent the spread uh, and and to uh, make the lifetime of the the drug uh, as long as possible. And actually, I also try the risk assessment the MR, uh, but it's not easy actually. So the when we think about the risk of the MR, it's not the risk of probability of infection. I mean, the probability is the same, but the effect of MR is the we, it is harder to treat that. So, so probably it is better to assess the risk with using a DALI, not with the chance of infection. So DALI can consider the duration of the sickness. So if we infected the disease with the resistance, maybe we have, we need a longer duration for treatment. So that may be considered by risk. But so 
could be so when we have the when we decide the dangerous level, we use the kind of acceptable risk risk level. So we when we assess the risk with DALI and when we have the access uh, acceptable risk level as DALI, or we can we can decide the sort of the standards uh, of, of to reduce the MR. Okay, I think so. The next question from uh, Dr. City. So, what is the effect of the psychochemical and mineralogical characters of the wastewater sludge on the diversity of the R, uh, IRB? So, that is uh, is there an effect of the psychochemical and mineralogical characteristics? Yeah, this is. I think uh, yes. Antibiotic resistance is sometimes related to the heavy metal uh, resistance because it's kind of defensive mechanisms of bacteria. So there's several defensive mechanisms. One of them is the flux pump. That is the when they got the antibiotics, they pump up the antibiotics outside of their cell. And that is sometimes common with the heavy metal resistance mechanisms. So I I don't know I don't know the the specific papers on that, but probably the heavy metal, high heavy metal or high metal or stress in the wastewater treatment possibly enhance the uh, mm. the antibiotic resistance. Actually, the in the sludge sludge bacteria in the antibiotic resistance genes coding a flux pump is really abundant. Mm. So it could be possible. And what is the best technique to measure bacteria? It is, there's no kind of best techniques. I think this depends on the purposes. Culture dependent techniques is good to know the, know the, the fecal bacteria. Fecal bacteria is often, often related to the pathogens, human pathogens. Mm. And genomic gene-based techniques can cover the old bacteria, but it's hard to link the resistance to the species because when we break the cell to extract DNA, we lost the information, link of species information and the resistance information. So I think it depends on the purpose. So uh, the last question about the, your uh, that one is, uh, I think she, uh, the last question have you been addressed? That one about yeah, the... uh, yeah, I think so. Mm. Okay. So that uh, things uh, all is from the uh, part in the sun. Yeah, uh, this is, I think, yeah, uh, similar to the previously yeah. Uh, questions. Yeah, so there in the drinking water, I think the you, I don't know, maybe WHO guideline has the uh, proposed, suggest the acceptable level of DALI. So maybe it could be the one of the stun, I mean, the criteria we we can use. Uh, but what we don't know is the how much of the horizontal transfer happens in our guts so when we intake the, drinking water it has the resin bacteria, which is not pathogens, but in our body, maybe it's the resistance genes transferred to non-pathogens to pathogens, and which may pose the risk. We don't know that. So it's not easy yet, I guess. It is no, we need we need a research or we need more discussion about how to assess the risk of AMR. Uh, that one's a uh, question also from CD. So, uh, is uh, about the uh, RV is only in the bacterial community or in other others like probably fungal or, or algal might be resistant to the antibiotic as well? Okay, so in the culture basis, the we study the mainly E. coli, yeah, so it's bacteria, and 
the metagenomic study, the, we we don't we don't separate it. We just take the DNA and the, read all the sequence of recent genes. So it on, includes all of them, but probably most of them from originated from the bacteria. Uh, one other possibly have resistance, uh, but probably it's uh, the mechanism could be different. Uh, yeah, so I mean that we. We read a sequence of the DNA in the wastewater, and uh, we compare it with the database. And the database includes many kinds of resonance genes, not only in the bacteria. But the ARG we found is probably most for the bacteria uh, origin ARGs. Mm. OK. Thank you. So uh, thanks, Gunter. Still have. Uh, one more question before we are closing. Winter, there's still one. Okay, Winter, we have... I think there is. Sorry. Oh, one more. I think so. One more question. I think. So. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Maybe the last one before we are. Okay. Uh, wait a bit. Yeah, so thank you for your question. So it's, it's a really important uh, study. So <laughs> the, it is known the AMR has the locality. So different cities, different countries, different catchment has a different energy profiles. Probably there's several possible the call reasons or factors, I guess. The one is the most important is the history of antibiotic use in that area, in that catchment. That affects much. And also, I think that an important, what I think important fact is the transportation between the different cities or countries. So as I talk in the, the talk, my talk that the, the travel, people's travel uh, may carry the AMR in the different countries. And also food trade, the livestock also car is a carrier of the MR. So when we import or export like uh, the meat or shrimp or aquaculture or the livestock products, that may cause the transfer of the MR. And another thing is, it's like a ship. Ship means uh, means the like like a car big cog ship. It's uh, it's carried the water, seawater. Uh, when when unload the payloads, they will load the ballast water to balance the ship. Uh, so ballast water is carried to the countries of countries and discharged in the ballast water discharged in, in the destination. So ballast water is possibly the carrier of the MR and uh, especially in the ocean. And yeah, of course, the airplane also in the long fly plane has, yeah, we eat a, a lot of food. They serve a lot of food and ice cream. So we go to the toilet, so that carries the MR. Uh, so yeah, I think it is very important. So it may be not in international travel, but, but also inside the countries, there is the import export of food trays. Some area is very, produce a lot of livestock farming and it's sold into the every place is many places in the country. So that may transfer the RB in the whole country. So that is the important factors. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, probably that one is the, the last question. Uh, but uh, before uh, closing, probably you, you have you have you have mentioned about the take home message, but it might be you have something to say in a few words to the the audience for the closing, Dr. Honda. Please, see if you have. Yeah. Okay. So I think <laughs> yeah, I think there there are many questions. So I think I don't have much to add about that. Uh, but this is the this is a seminar with. The, uh, create overseas research grant, right? So I think yeah. MR is the 
the really important issue uh, in the in the Asian countries. So yeah, it's not only the wastewater issues, but also drinking water issues, mm-hmm. and uh, also the kind of social issue, like like I Alexander questioned me, like the the trouble and transportation, whatever. So yeah, I think yeah, yeah, many of many of the applicants propose mm-hmm. about that topic <laughs> to the court. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. So I think so. Uh, because uh, this session will be uh, is, is already finished, so that, that uh, we will take the photo session first. Gunpur, maybe you may yes. have before okay. before uh, before uh, after the, after uh, this session, we will have a short session on the uh, call for proposal for the young uh, researcher on the uh, water environments. So that one is uh, I will talk in Bahasa. That one will be a breakout room. Uh, so that